Hey, what's up, guys? So, welcome back we are to the Out of Frame podcast. Uh, I wasn't in fully, I don't think that I would stick with this name too much, but I think uh, I'm liking the, the ring. I think it sounds pretty nice. Um, but right now, um, so I, I kind of was debating right now I'm recording this the week of Black Friday and part of what I wanted to go through. And I think because the reality I think I realized is since these episodes I've decided are coming up on Monday, um, I don't think it would be a great idea for me to or at least I should say, like, I want to go over potentially like when you see holiday deals i think that's something to be because in camera world in the camera world maybe versus like you know furniture or other like you know other i I guess like other areas of of shopping right you will consistently maybe you'll find a really good deal or not like if i went i'm not going to pull it up on the screen right now but if i went to amazon do they have everything set up right now? No, they don't. Um, so companies like Amazon generally aren't super bad about getting their stuff like set and whatnot, right? Um, so that that they like they usually can have they you will find a deal somewhere, right? That that will happen. Um, but I want to talk in a way. I'm gonna kind of call out B and H a little bit, but everyone does this so we're going to talk about it here uh which is going to be um the uh, i want to start with i just want to briefly go over this and then we're going to go over the main topic uh just because i want i want you to see this first so especially you know if you're not somebody who's not fully aware um so we're going to look at just this panasonic holiday deals and i checked canon sony and fuji film as well they're not particularly amazing um, and the big thing is, so I I get relatively intimately familiar with uh, Panasonic uh, prices of everything. Um, so that that's partly why I'm using them as my prime example here. Um, and the really the biggest place that I'm going to look at for that type of thing is this. Where is it? It's somewhere. That one's the is this boy right here. The 20 millimeter i have i've consistently looked at this thing since i got my camera and the reason is i really enjoy the i really do enjoy the 40 millimeter look it's a it is a focal length i frequently shoot at if i am unsure about if i'm unsure about kind of where i plan to shoot 40 millimeters is where i go it just is the default and this lens i've obviously been relatively familiar with now let's even just we'll pull up the lens only um the reality is this 267 is about the same so just when you're out there and you're doing your shopping by the way again don't live in invale uh just typed in random zip codes and called it a day um uh you know this is really no different than where it has been I, i mean maybe i'm wrong and maybe it had been at 297 a good amount of time but as far as I know, like this is where this this price has consistently been, and I honestly like the the thing you just have to keep in mind, like this three forty seven. I believe it is it's been this like this has been this price for forever. You know, you just need to keep in mind like what these black price the Friday prices are. So when we go when I pull up these the cameras we're gonna talk about today, um. I want you to know that I'm not bringing them up suddenly so you can question, well, well, these all have holiday pricing on them. Aren't they going to change? No, they're not. For example, when we looked at the G7, right, this is, it has been this price since before I knew it because I have been recommending this camera since the original video. In fact, um, I'm going to pull, I'm going to go look up the video where I put the picture of the G9 in it. Or the G7. I'm gonna I'm gonna go find that. I need to. Oh, let's see. We need. I need to get to. Oh, this is not. 
Man, I picked. I took. I picked a terrible. I picked a terrible name. Why did I go with just my my name? Makes no sense. Terrible for SEO. Uh, so let's go find video reference guide to the convention. I'm gonna mute it just for safety's sake here. But I need to go find. Let's see. So I need to find our. Man, I kind of forgot what I looked like when I was. Uh, fully shaved. Uh, let's see. So we've got those Sony and Canon. Yeah, Sony's. I need to find myself a G7 here. Well, bam. All right, found it. And so this was back in December. So, yeah, so this is back in December. Like, I don't mean to call you out here. Like, it was, yes. It was, it's dropped by $50. Sure. Like, yeah, sure. And here, we'll, we'll, we'll even go, we're going to go to base. We're going to make sure it's the exact same. Right? And currently, I'm uploading something to Natural Ones. So that's why you'll see this here. Um, yeah, so you will, <laughs> like, there is, there's no difference here. And, you know, like, that's just, like, this is common. This happens a lot. And that's just kind of the reality is you got to be, you got to keep a real grain of salt when you have this stuff. A lot of times, a lot of companies, again, B&H is not the only one that does this. Everybody does it. It happens on Amazon. It happens to so many, in, like it, every, almost everywhere does this. Even the, even stores, like even like Walmart, Target, everybody does this. There is no escaping it. So let's keep that in mind. This isn't a total like, dig at B and H or whatever, like this is a this is just more of a note for everybody. When Black Friday's coming up or any or Black Friday had to happen, if you bought a camera, that's great. But never buy equipment like this on a whim because you think it's on sale. Most often it is not actually in any type of big sale and you gotta be really careful. So just a, a quick word of a word of note, um, especially because this is going to be coming out on Cyber Monday, so sites like this will inevitably become more important. Um, however, something that B and H does do, if you want to kind of slightly bring things back into a friendly B and H territory here, um, their deal zone does end up being a not not a relatively decent a bargain place. Um, for example, I do I do recall the um, this Moza Aircross to um, I do recall this being about a similar price. Uh, so that one is actually not too bad. This um, is usually not 119. This often, if I remember correctly, um, well, it's a Seagate, so it's it's usually roughly around this. So again, they're not all perfect for sure, but um, sometimes you will find one on here that's okay. Um, like again, I think this one is technically actually on sale. Um, when I bought, I bought a Feutech, or I like I, I temporarily bought a Feutech A6000 or something, whatever it's called, um, on this deal zone once because it actually was for less, um, for a significant amount less actually. Um, this one isn't as good as the one I had gotten when I got the Feutech, but um, this Aircross is a really nice gimbal. Like it's very good. Um, you know, it, it works really well. Um, so stuff like this is what could work really well, you know, cause like professionally, I would say, yeah, I would say, I would say potentially like these are about relatively close to what they would be. So this is like 469, 369. So this gives me a little more credence that this might be not super real, but we'll see. <laughs> Uh, but the deal zone does uh, every now and then you will find something good here. But again, be careful and don't buy things on whims. That's that's my number one rule is just don't buy stuff just because you think it's on sale. You know, like here, for example, like we'll take the the Seagate backup plus. So I'm going to go I'm going to load up Amazon again here. I'm amazing. 
Amazing.com instead of Amazon. I accidentally hit that I too many times. Okay, let's do Seagate 4 terabyte external hard drive. All right, so it on Amazon, so as we can see now on Amazon, it's about $20 more, which is what I about expected it to be. Um, so, like, then what we're getting is a $20 deal. So, hey, if you are, if you are already looking at hard drives, then, hey, that, I, my word of warning, I've, these Seagates are, like, I've found them to be weirdly slow at reading and writing. So, they're not good to work off of in terms of any type of, any type of editing. Um, but they're not terrible for, uh, value and for like long-term storage. So be that as it may, um, they are not terrible. They just also aren't amazing. So like I said, be that as it may. Um, but otherwise, yeah, the other, only other thing that we're going to really worry about is, um, I still had this dandy thing open, uh, tab open from earlier. Um, the main thing I want to talk about in, in, in the earnest for the rest of this, this podcast, um, is going into the realm of the realm of cinema, uh, the realm of getting the starter cinema camera kit. Um, and I've got to quickly log myself in here. Um, and I'm not going to, I can't do that. So uh, I will, but this uh, I've I have messed up. <laughs> Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna I, I'm gonna upload or I'm gonna get the uh, I'm gonna I just need to get to my list on another on to on Chrome. I was using Firefox for a reason, but now it's like now I need <laughs> now I need it. <laughs> All right, I just need the list at least, um, which is a public list, so that's fine. Unless did I delete it? Oh shoot, I deleted it. No. Oh, dang. I didn't realize I deleted that crap. All right. Well, that's unfortunate. Oh, no, no, no. I found it. I found it. It just, I it eluded me. All right, cool. Uh, Hyperlink. Here we go. Copy. The, I almost made this a lot harder than I needed to, luckily. So here we go. All right. So I made this list a little while ago. It's not ordered in any way, so we're going to go from the bottom up. So if you are if you're one of those people who's like i want to get a real video camera there are amazing budget options that exist nowadays right now i made a list for a z cam um partly because it it assists in proving parts of my points about them so it's a little biased but hey we'll get to that so we are going to start with um, obviously the Z cam itself. So that is the Z cam is two thousand um, dollars, and we're we're just going right now. We are sitting in the realm. We're making this bill based on like, you know, hey, I want I want a cinema camera or I need a cinema camera. We're going to go, yeah, we're going off of the belief that people that you may have that I need a cinema camera uh, for a video, right? And to many, to many extents, that could be true. You, you have the justification of whether or not you truly need a cinema camera. Um, but I, I'm going to slightly challenge your mentality if that's your thought. And if you make it through, then by all means, go ahead and make the investment. But if you don't, we'll talk about it in a minute. We'll talk about the alternatives in a minute. So you have a Z cam. So you you are a videographer. Like we are we are not we're going outside of the hybrid shooter. You know your needs are not to be a hybrid shooter. You want to just do video and that's it, right? So that's fine. So we're gonna you, we're gonna make this build starting with the Z cam. So Z cam E two, uh, because the um the E two uh six or whatever. Um, or the F series, I think is what they're called or something. Let's see. We'll see if it pops up here. Um, yeah, the E2S, this like S line that they have. These aren't out yet, so we're not going to totally put them in. But also for like $1,000, you get a 6K Super 35 sensor uh, with a with a potential E ND, electronic ND filter. To be fair, this is a great value to like price to performance point. But it's not out yet, so we're not going to make any type of review like that. 
Um, but anyway, the ZK M2. So that this is out. This is something you could get now. It works on a Micro Four Thirds sensor. You don't get raw, like the Black Magic, and you don't get like ProRes. Uh, here we'll, we'll we'll open it up actually. We'll open it up here. Um, so you know, in terms of like what we're getting here, we'll go to the actual specs. To, you know the internal recording uh you which you know you can be which is going to be some type of like uh which i believe is a c fast um it only has one which is kind of a shame you want if you can get that redundancy if you're doing a professional shoot really helpful really useful um but to be fair you don't always run into that for example i run into the issue of not being able to have redundancy with my atomos um but that's the price that's the price we pay and that's what we deal with um but that is always a possibility. Um, but and if I really if I really needed redundancy, my GH5 does have that, and I could use SDXC, especially if I'm recording in um, 1080p. Then I'm really not going to worry about it. Um, which is so that inevitably comes down to whatever the client needs. Um, so, but these do record at H.265, which is a crazy nice bit rate. So H.264 gets a slightly bad rap in the world of mp4 because it's i think when a lot of people just kind of export into h264 or they have cameras that do mp4 files or and just a lot of that type of stuff um i think they what they don't fully understand is that they may not know that their bit rate is probably set to really low um, for example, if you by default, like I'll never hear, I'll inevitably I'll open up a media encoder here. So I'll just I'll let that load up, but then I'll I'll open it up here so you guys can see it. Um, media encoder is, is so a lot of people who will just default to something like MP4 by def that you know will just go to whatever presets are available, you know in you know in this realm. Um, <laughs> sorry um we're going to use the first episode file that's sitting in my my queue here as an example um so this is you know we have h2 we have it set for h264 um just because youtube it's good for youtube compression anyway it just makes it simple um however um so the way i currently have it set up is went over the other monitor um i currently have it set up to export in 1080p because again there's just no reason i'm recording in 1080p um you know i could put these out in 4k if i want to use my camera sure um but i don't need to for i absolutely don't need to um but i could do that i could do this render at maximum def um but one of the things that i try to do is i try to do two things i first of all i do two pass um you know, this is really important for helping, you know, it, it almost kind of just like melds over and r helps repad in all the pixels to make sure that you can retain as much information as possible. It doubles your render time, but it's well worth it because essentially you're rendering twice into the same file. So you're just helping everything out. Now, the default for like, we'll go to the match source, high bit rate. The def a lot of people just hit this default hit okay just hit okay and call it a day but you really don't often want to do that right oftentimes and even then i set mine higher um you know this starts at 12 megabits per second that's high bit rate in the lowest definition like in terms of if you want something like and that's the thing i didn't care i put it at a 16 megabits per second because again this was a webcam video record and this whole thing is being recorded on obs because again i'm recording this and my camera battery is dead from daishokan but i wanted to record this today because this is the probably the only day this week i'm going to have this time to do it um you know because of thanksgiving and whatnot um so you like for this, it's not a huge deal. I'm not recording on something that's really high definition. Um, but if I'm recording this on my GH5, um, you know, that's going to, I want to retain a lot of the information. Um, so, and, and especially if I'm putting anything into backlogging. So, and even H.264 can sometimes um, work really well. For example, um, so I work for, I work for a company, as I've mentioned, uh, called Rustic Manor. Um, so I have a preset for them called Manor Backlog. Um, 
in which case it's a crazy hot and you never need to output at this but it is a crazy high uh bit rate but it still is a more reduction than based on what i originally recorded in um and that's why oftentimes if it's a if it is a if it's a file that is filmed in some type of log i will actually shoot with i'll actually put in this alexa lut that i have um on it because it's it's really not obtrusive i like the color look it looks fine and with the vlog um so i kind of use this if it's any type of log file um but otherwise like because i have to keep clips i have to keep a large number of clips available um that aren't attached to a video um because there's a lot of times that we need b-roll for our advertisements and they have to be they have to be their the original clips otherwise they're not going to work that well um so i do match plenty of things like i'll match the source of the original file um so our original file was 1920 by 1080 um but if this is some 4k file in fact here i'll i'm gonna grab one for a minute here so um i have i have a number of files still around because we are debating on seeing one come in here soon um or here i'll do this i'll do um I will, uh, oop, here, we're going to do this quick. So I'm going to, I'm going to import some file. We'll just do this one. Import to queue. All right. And then I'm just going to go back here to Manor Studios. Um, so you can just see it at least. All right. So we have our file here. So this is our 4k file shot in log. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our manner backlog with, with, with Alexa. So this is the lot we have it. You can really tell it doesn't, it's very unobtrusive. Like if I needed to, I could, you know, go into the effects and I could apply one of my lots if I wanted to, this is 2020. None of my lots are in here. So that's a shame. Um, but I do have this preset made and it obviously, and it will carry through. Um, so you can see the difference between the two right boom no lut with lut and again this is an unobtrusive lut so if i need to edit it later i can um oop, okay i'm gonna go back make sure this is set to my default all right so yeah so you can see now this is a 4k file it was shot in uh 60 frames a second because i intended to slow it down um you know, I render it at maximum depth. I make sure I retain as much information as I can, but this will still be smaller than the base one. Um, so this was uh, the original file uh, was, can I open it in source? Let's see, can I find reveal in media browser? Let's go back to this one. Uh, let's see, so this original file, can I find... Oh, here, I'll reveal an explorer. It'll go up on my other monitor, but that's fine. Um, so originally, this was 224 megabytes. Uh, so we're going to skip. I'm actually just going to remove it because I had it in there just in case of an issue. Um, so here, I'm going to put this next to my the other one. Uh, I'm going to put this next to the other file. So we're going to do it just as with our not a match source high bit rate. We're going to do it with... Actually, we'll do both. So I'm going to duplicate this. We're going to do an example. And th I, this is a digression for damn sure, but it's an important one because it's really going to explain why shooting in raw is not always the solution. This is I'm bringing this up for a very high, re very good reason. Not doing it for any. I'm not doing it just for the sake of doing it. All right. So I'm just going to do match source by high bit rate default, right? So we're just going to do. So it's just default, so it's like high bit rate, right? Totally fine. And then we're gonna do it with our our Alexa LUT here. And this is with again, so and our bit rate goes all the way up to like 72, 64. Like for final for like final videos that I release, mine are set to like 35 or like or not 35, like 53 or somewhere in that range. The target bit rate is maybe somewhere around like 47, something like that. You know, and I, I always do, I have, I keep my keyframe distance to 10, uh, just because I like having my tent poles to be really close to each other. Again, 
these keyframes are just like reference frames. So the clo the smaller this number, the higher the quality that you have. Um, so I like to keep this pretty uh, pretty low. So 10 frames is pretty fine, especially because it's around half, it's under half, but close to half of the frame rate of my video. So essentially it's almost every second I have a keyframe. And that's kind of why I like, that's kind of the logic I like to keep. So a lot of times if it's a 30 frames per second, I'll maybe make this closer to 15. Um, but, and then I'll make this 27, it's a 60 FPS video. Um, but since it's a 24, it is going to be 10. Um, or traditionally, but since I am trying to, that is traditionally for final output, for this backlog, I have a 10 just because I want a crazy amount of data. Um, so we are going to let both of these go. All right, so I finished rendering. Uh, there's just gonna be a slight cut here for that. Um, so we have our three files here. We're looking at these three mainly. I'll, I'll blow these up so they're a little bigger here. All right, so we have our three here. Um, so this is our original file. This is the, the one that was recorded right out of camera. Um, it's essentially about 100 megabits a second, I think, was the bit rate in this video. Or this video. So it was 224 megabytes was the file size, right? For a 13-second clip, totally fine. Um, now, if this was our match source high bit rate. So now it is only 15 megabytes, but we're going to look in a, in a second where that becomes a problem. And then this is our backlog preset. It has a lot added to it so it, it has inherently extra data than this one and it obviously shows that it plenty it added plenty amount but we're still under you know we're still under half of the size of the original between 224 to 100 and that's going to be great that's great for trying to keep a backlog of information but not only that but making sure that it retains a good amount of its value oh Freaking VLC. <laughs> Hold on. Let me get VLC reined in here. Um, so this is not, this always isn't my best example. Um, but one of the things that can you might be able to see, you may or may not be able to see in this, is there's, there's, def, there's going to be a compression issue. We're going to have a lot more pixels. So this isn't inherently the best video for it. Um, but in areas that there will be inev inevitably will be a number of pixels, you'll see a lot of the areas of like compression and whatnot in spaces where there's a lot of, of information and data. Um, like this, this doorknob here is a little bit cleaner and just some of the particles around the, around these are going to inevitably be cleaner. Now, because this has a lot attached to it, it's a little different. Um, but now going back to our our friendly Z cam here. So this does this does sh this can shoot in in ProRes. So the options are there, but it also shoots in H.265. They did add Z cam raw, but what it doesn't do is it just doesn't record really well and you shouldn't look at that as a downside because h265 can look just fine what matters is if whether or not you're recording in a color profile you know and this has a z log profile so you can record in h265 with z log and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that you know it's really easy to look at the black magic pocket cinema and be like oh but this costs a thousand dollars more but H.265 is a crazy big, um, you know, will create it. I don't want to go through the rendering process for it, but H.265 has sometimes doubled the size of files that I've had, that I've recorded. It is a crazy high bit rate. It is really good for high quality video. It, it's, um, it's going to definitely change the game when more cameras record in H.265. So, and something like the Z cam is really useful for that. And obviously it being a relatively almost modular type camera is really conducive for that. It, you can record onto NPF batteries, which these things can get really massive. You know, like the, the LPE six batteries, I think can top up somewhat near 2000 milliamp. You know, this one here, 
is 6,600 milliamp hour battery. You know, like imagine if you put this to your phone. I mean, nuts. Although there are some that have been into phones, but that's a another digression. We're not going to do. We're not going to do that digression. Um, but you can go into an MP. You know, you can go into MPF battery here. You know, let's find. Can we find a more straight? No. Um, but you have other, obviously plenty of other ports. You have this I/O port, a power port. You have a mini XLR port. Uh, you have this little Wi-Fi connector your HDMI cable up here and USB-C port uh, if you need like a COM port which this sometimes I, if I remember correctly these will be used for time code purposes um, so that is this can be useful on a professional set like this has tools in it that can help it be useful for a professional set um, you know you have a little bit you have a standard mic and headphone input on that side you know you have plenty of manual control on the camera. Not we don't have to worry about but uh, like software controlling. Like there is a lot of use to something like this. Then let's say if you get like this filmmaker's kit, or even hell, let's just say you get this basic kit, right? Comes with a cage, comes with a monitor, comes with two batteries, an HDMI cord, a little small rig thing, and an SD card, or an, yeah, an SD holder or an SSD holder, and a CFast card, right? For an extra thousand dollars done call it right the sad part is this isn't really all you need this is what you need to get started for sure and it's a great deal for three thousand dollars great deal sure potentially or or we look at our list here so we've got we can pull up the small rig here you know i put in a follow focus here and this is the reason if you're getting this camera you really want to have a professionalized like workflow and system here. And so a big part of that, honestly, is if you can get a follow focusing system to work with the camera and to be able to have like essentially a first AC and whatnot, then absolutely you will need that. But on the downside, you potentially may need two of these. So careful with that one because this may end up being a little more pricey than you want it to be. Um, but getting ahead of ourselves so having you know but having a wireless system can be really useful even just for yourself um not needing to reach up to the front of the camera i in fact am debating getting one of these and attaching it just somewhere on my cage um for when i'm doing handheld shoots just because then i can have it here and hold it keep my grip keep my grip and hold you know and hold the the and just be able to either thumb or move quickly with the follow focus in the back of my hands rather than needing again to reach the front changing my grip size um so there are these are potential these are always something that can be really useful i've heard really nice things about the uh the tilta the tilta nucleus nano however there's also the iFocus kit from moza which i have used um personally and it's okay. It runs into certain latency issues. It can kind of lose track if you aren't mounted correctly, but that'll happen with any wireless system. So, but they are very useful when you need them. So obviously then if we're planning on using stuff like this, we're going to need this small rig. Uh, you know, we're going to want some rods to put into our cage, uh, which this, this doesn't have. So we'll get to that in a second. Um, and then we're getting into this, you know, we're going to honestly, Though, if we're going for a full professional set, if we can, we want a VMAL battery. Like, these things, like, just power through. And so, cause, so these are generally just weighted in their watt hours, um, which a lot of times you will see other camera or other batteries listed on their watt hours, too, because they're, they're, they're good to know for flights if you plan to fly with anything. Um, so these newer ones I have here, these are for these NPF batteries. Uh, this is 48.8 watt hours. Um, so essentially almost two of, two of these equal one V mount and you can get better ones. I picked this one as a cheaper one. Um, we've used these at, um, uh, we've had these ones at our PBS station, um, that, uh, that I went to school in, um, and they work just fine. Like they work just fine. We use them on. Um, we use these, this exact brand, this exact battery on our TV cameras and they work just fine. So, 
um, this SSD. Um, so I would generally recommend if you plan, especially for a professional shoot, you keep a minimum of a terabyte of for an SSD if you plan to be at all professional, um, just because you'll you'll be able to shoot all day, all day, especially in H.265. Um, you'll shoot all day for sure. Even if you step down to MP4, um, you know, you'll be able to just shoot forever. Um, so these are really useful. And what's nice about these is it's just an SSD. So you unhook it. What's nice about the cage uh, that we are looking at here is it has a clamp built in, just built into it. It has this clamp um, to keep the connection. Can you please? Uh, the keep the connection stable on your USB on your USB C port, so it's really nice for that type of thing. Um, being able to have uh, the, and then you can plug this right into the computer. You can edit off this if you wanted to. I don't recommend doing that, but you can if you need to in a pinch. Um, but it's quick access. It, you won't get bottleneck from having a hard drive. So, um, but obviously then you'll want some type of adapter. Um, honestly, you can see a hundred videos about how to rig out a cinema camera. And so a lot of this is transferable to a black magic, um, pocket cinema. Um, so honestly, definitely you can just do that. Um, but you'll, you will need with this camera, you will need a monitor. You, the Z cam requires a monitor. And to me that somewhat puts its value outside of the pocket cinema to be a little bit lesser now between the pocket cinema what this beats it on is it's some of its recording features. And this is the Pocket Cinema 4K. Um, and it's just in terms of like frame rate options. So if, let's say we'll do 10-bit H.265, right? That can go all the way up to 120 frames a second. It does this weird crop. Um, like it does this like weird crop apparently um, on one of these. I don't remember which one, um, but being able to go at 120 frames a second is really nice. Like it's it's super nice. There's not many cameras that you can really do that with, um, that also are as good in that have that also have, you know, double na dual native ISOs, right? Like that's that's something that is really not that's not really um that gets undersold a lot by a lot of these cameras is they're just really good ISO and dual ISO performance. Um, but you'll need a monitor because there's no screen, as you could tell. The Blackmagic, you can get away with not having a monitor. You absolutely can. Do not at all believe when people complain about the fact that you can't tilt it, that it, like you can't really tilt it, that you, you know, it doesn't pop out, whatever. Like, Ignore that. Right. If you want a monitor, go ahead and get one, especially if you're going to be on a large set, because then it's then it's easier just to show other people your monitor. Um, but then you don't need anything really fancy either. The Z cam, you're going to need a monitor. So might as well get one that has a lot of features on it. The Shinobi is a really good one for that. Um, then, you know, you just need some type of swivel art. I have this one in there. You could actually uh, dumbed down onto one that just looks like this. It's just a little ball head. I got this for like 20 bucks. So this actually could go down a little bit here. Um, but then there's this kind of, um, then, then there's this, uh, base plate. So this is really useful and you'll want to have this because then you can, all you'll need to do is, um, you would just have this little quick release here. So you can just get the plate off and on whenever you need to, but this will also give you space for those rods. So now you can put stuff onto your camera and you can put it on a rod set. You can shoulder rig it like this guy is. You can put follow focus on it. Um, I actually may invest in something like this is sometime uh, just from what I've learned from like my my area with like um, from what I've learned with having to do handheld stuff. Um, but it's a di there's a different feel than it being on your shoulder and it being in your hand. So it's just a different feel. And I'm just not crazy about it all the time. Uh, but there is use for it, for sure. Um, we don't need that anymore, and we don't need this anymore. Um, so these are something that you can definitely use. Uh, you'll want to have some type of mount for your SSD because you need that in hand. Uh, you can get a handle. There are handles, actually, that are out there. 
um, that have SSD slots in them. So if you want, you could potentially kill two birds with one stone. I would argue just get this one. And then if you need the handle, you can get the handle. Um, I have this handle. It's useful. That's just why I threw it on there. Um, it feels fine. I think it feels fine. It works. It's universal. You can swap the sides it goes on. So up to you. Um, but yeah, otherwise, um, you know, I would just get this one because being able just to, because this way you can keep it on your cage and you don't have to worry about it getting in the way of a gimbal or something. Um, you don't inherently have to worry about this. I actually wouldn't even get this anymore. Um, you can get for like $6, you can just get this little short cable, little short HDMI cable from mono price on Amazon for like eight dollars real ch these are these are just fine these work really well mono price actually does make pretty decent cables despite that they don't make great quality other stuff they they do make good cables though um and you can just get a really thin and short one they're really malleable when they're short like this like you can kind of coil them up and they don't really fight you too much because they're so thin um so they're really nice to have these really thin ones for um, and you can get a really short, just like, this is just a one foot cable, real nice. You can get a half foot one. I would recommend getting the one foot one just because it makes it easier, but that's for your monitor. Um, and then you can get a, you know, what's nice is obviously though, if you're going to get that V mount, you want type of D tap to four pin, um, uh, which this can just be used. It says for red, but you actually can use that on the Z cam. And I believe the, oh no, the old. The Ninja Five or the Black Magic will use a different power, a different power plug, um, but the Z Cam uses a Limo four pin Limo power cable. Um, but otherwise, then you can you'll want to get some type of XLR to Mini XLR, um, which they make for Black Magic. Uh, so you can just get that one and it works really well. And then obviously you'll just need a, char a charger for your V mount battery. Um, but otherwise, that's everything you need. You know, you have everything set for yourself. Um, but that whole rig, now that we have come up here, where did that go? Why can't I see the value? Why can't I see the total? What? Hold up. Why can't I see the total? Uh, can I go back here? No. Oh, I can't see the total. That's really annoying. Uh, I'll pull up the total on the original one, see if I can find that. I don't want to worry about capturing this one but i'll find the total here <coughs> uh, let's see so this total is three thousand six hundred ninety eight dollars so it is six hundred dollar we're about seven hundred dollars over that three thousand dollar kit so and uh, in all honesty and that to be fair like this is a way better value than what we got in uh this like the differences between this kit and this is way better, especially because it can actually go less because of things like not needing, like you know, saving forty dollars on this swivel mount, um, saving uh, about twenty dollars on this, you know, HDMI cable. There, there's money to be saved a little bit. It's not like I change it to be. It's not going to make this $3,000, but it's going to make it a way better value. And then if anything, you could go V-mount battery -less. Because the reason you use a V-mount is if you also then wanted to power your Shinobi and stuff like that. But honestly, if you just went and if you just went with like the NPF batteries, right? If you just use the Sony batteries, you could, you could knock this down then another, let's see, almost like $400. You can get this close to that. Um, you can almost get right close to that, like $3,000 mark. And suddenly this is, you're getting way more useful things for your money for filmmaking. And people have done the same thing with the black magic and to be fair, the black magic then also is another, um, thousand dollars off, right? That's another $1,000 in your pocket because this is a 12, $1,300 camera. Like you can't you can't deny that that utility and especially tilta makes this really tilta does make a really nice um cage set for the black magic um this seems like a lot but it comes like 224 dollars seems like a lot 
but it does come with a lot of things that you will need. Um, like it has an SSD holder for the Samsung um, SSD. Um, you know, if you wanted to, you could 3D print your own though, if you really wanted to and not worry about getting the whole thing. It has a handle on it though, with kind of a more comfortable grip than mine has. Um, you know, it, it's a quick release top handle too, so it's really easy to put on and off. Um, you know, it just has useful things on it to make, to help things out. Um, it also comes with its own cable for, uh, it comes with a cable to help work with this cage. So you don't have to worry about trying to figure out your own cable um, system. So, but the Black Magic itself is obviously way cheaper um, and really helps out a lot. You can get like this DTAP kit, which just has a bunch of cables. So you can just do one DTAP to a bunch of your cables, which is, again is really useful. Um, and being able to record in Black Magic's RAW is really useful if you don't. But if you don't use DaVinci Resolve, you're running into the problem of suddenly you need, you know, you have to find a way to convert it, right? So you have to color grade in DaVinci Resolve, but you now need to know about what you're going to inevitably output this stuff into. And that is exactly why I went on that entire diversion about why things like H.264 aren't as bad as they may seem, but also why you may or may not need a cinema camera. And that is absolutely because it's whether or not you absolutely need raw in the first place. Sure, is a camera is a 4K camera with dual ISO for thirteen hundred dollars worth it? Yes. That was probably really loud. I apologize. Um, but is is that worth it in many ways? Yeah, that's an ama the 4K is still an amazing value, especially because what you'll need with the 4K for well, what you'll kind of need for both cameras honestly because that's the thing that z cam kit you'll notice that didn't have a lens in it you know that was a that that comparison was only to this the base kit that we had but that didn't include a lens either you gotta buy lenses suddenly now that money you thought you saved by not going v-mount Suddenly you gotta. And then with the black magic, you have to get a VML battery. You cannot be on a professional set unless you're using some type of dummy battery system to plug it into the wall, but then you can't be mobile or you need a V-mount. And to be fair, the black magic with a V-mount, I've worked with it. I have worked with it personally. I've I have seen the black magic. That's honestly it's why I personally do vouch for its its value is because it just is so good. The Z cam, I only know from other people's use, right? I've only talked to people who own one and they they swear by it. Like people who own a, the the Z cam, they swear by that that camera. They love it and having dual native ISOs can be really useful. Um you know, like for the Black Magic, the dual natives are at 400 and 3200. Um I thought it was 16, but I might be wrong. Um, but the, I, mean, I might be reading this, this wrong, but as far as I know, you know, it's, um, it, it's dual native is the, what's it? Uh, it's 432 as far as I'm reading on this listing here and having dual native ISO is amazing. It, it is super helpful in low light. Um, it makes what is traditionally a poor low light sensor in micro four thirds work amazingly well. And then you go even past that. There are so many adapters that can be put on the micro four thirds and you essentially can make it a super 35 size sensor just through magnification. Now the downside is that, you know, suddenly you are adding adapters and whatnot, but you don't have to worry about manual focus or autofocus because these don't have that. And that's something though that I think goes underserved in a running gun. So a big thing that these cameras get purported for is potentially, I think a, there's a lot of YouTubers out there that purport this camera for use as like running gun style documentaries. And yeah, I would argue you should know how to you pull manual focus, especially when doing documentary like work. It's very challenging. It is not easy in any way to do that, but you may have to do that. 
And <clears throat> honestly, if you can utilize any type of autofocus, if you can, having a reliable autofocus can a lot of times help. Like that's why a lot of people shoot docks with C two hundreds, and probably in the future the C five hundred Mark II. Um, you know, people use autofocus for good reason in that when there's reliable autofocus, it just there's sometimes there's no there's no replacement. There's no replacement for dual pixel autofocus. There just isn't. You know, Sony's um Sony's autofocus system on their a7 series cameras are really good. I don't know how it behaves on their F if they have any on any of their FS cameras. Um cuz I don't really have much use with them and the one that I used really doesn't. Um but they that's the thing. It's just like they having being able to have continual autofocus is a is a godsend in many situations because it allows you to not have to worry about you know, if your kind of subject is if you're trying to shoot in a relatively shallow depth of field because you're not in the best of lighting, you know, and you don't really don't want the picture to get really grainy. So and you got to constantly be throwing or like watch your step and keep your distance in mind. Um, being able to just dial in and autofocus can sometimes be extremely useful. And in all honesty, you're not necessarily always um taking out a huge amount of problems um so for example uh, where is this? There we go. i like to shoot a lot of my run and gun stuff um with shotgun stuff i like to be able to kind of feel like that i'm getting the room i'm really getting in there because i could put a lot a lav on my subject and then at that point it doesn't matter whether or not i have phantom power but i you know i use this is the sony or this is the road ntg2 um, I've used this for a number of my projects when I was in school, um, and I, I felt like I could get it. It doesn't start, at it, it doesn't sound amazing all the time when you're recording with it in, you know, in the, like on the site. But you can the with editing, this can l sound really nice. Um, so I do actually like using this, and it's a really great budget option for mics because the NTG three. It's like two hundred dollars more than this, um, so you get a really decent mic for not a crazy amount. But the downside is you um, you have to it has to be powered, so you can power it by this bat by a double A battery in here, but it's it just it's not as clean for sure. Um, like it's much quieter if it's only going off of the battery power. I've noticed. Um, it's one of those things where I would rather supply it with phantom power than so doing it with that. You may be wondering why am I not using this to record it, and it's just because it's not important um, right now. But I could, if anything, I could give an example. Um, but so something like the Black Magic gives this phantom power, right? But the downside, the downside, again, goes into the things that are then necessary, everything else that's necessary. Um, because again, this thing, the black magic dies super fast. So you have to build, you have to build like all these whole rigs. So are you somebody that wants to use a gimbal? S well, then you have to prepare for it. So, and a lot of my audience that I think that a lot of the audience that watches a lot of my content are convention people. So if you're somebody who shoots weddings, and you shoot conventions and you're not doing a professional shoot, I would not get a cinema camera. I just wouldn't. Even if you're like, I'm a cam I am a video person. I I don't want to worry about photos. Right? I don't care. I don't I'm not even buying the full creative class. Like I'm just buying the video set for Adobe or whatever. I'm just getting DaVinci Resolve, which is free. Like Go right ahead. I'm not stopping you. I am not stopping you at all. Like, don't let anybody tell you what you have to get. But I just wouldn't recommend it. I honestly, I would put a better investment in getting something like, you know, if anything, maybe a G9, which is $300, not even $400 less than the Black Magic right now. Uh, the uh, the G9 is pretty much right about at 1000 or I think it's right around... 
Um, I think it's right around 900. Um, that is, I'm getting, a, I have messed up because I just tried searching G9 and all I get are a bunch of Samsung phones for some reason, I guess. And a pan Sonic, whoops. Uh, so yeah, no, it's right out about a thousand. So it's $300 less than the black magic. Um, sure. you you lose raw and you lose raw and you lose sure here's the thing you lose raw and you lose dual native iso but what you gain is dual image stabilization with plenty of panasonic lenses internal internal uh internal stabilization in the camera body black magic does not have that so you gotta you gotta learn to have a steady hand but you but you all you still get 4k 60 you can get it to 10 bit if you use an external recorder like my at, like the Atomos Ninja 5 which I use and I absolutely love the video that comes out of that um you you can get um you know you get vlog so you can grade like they have turned the G9 into an amazing value camera like an amazing value because you can still speed boost it you can still use all the lenses that you would put onto that black magic but uh, to me honestly you get more of you get more of a versatile kit right it just is more it's just more versatile and if anything then put up some investment into something else because though what i will say is the g9's continual autofocus isn't particularly amazing but then if you go up to something like the canon eos r which i've used and actually really isn't as bad and even though it's only 8-bit um, even though it's only 8-bit log, Canon kind of takes an Alexa, Canon kind of takes the Alexa approach to color science. Um, whereas like Alexa does, like Airy takes an approach for pixels, right? Um, like the red has an 8K camera. The Aries, a lot of them, I think only go up to maybe like 6K or something like that. Maybe not even a lot of them still are like 4K. Um, but the m more v movies and more more oscar winning movies are shot with aries and that's because they just make their pixels look better than just pure resolution uh canon takes a similar realm in terms of having it be like our 8-bit footage will grade better than maybe this other camera's 10-bit footage uh depending on what it is so for example the z cam z cam raw Zcam Raw grades terribly. You can find reviews online. There's not a whole lot. They're very hard to find. Um, but from the reviews and the footage that I saw, Zcam Raw grades terribly. It just is not. And to be fair, Zcam's a new independent company. They're a Chinese company, but they don't have a huge following. So they are growing and they are learning, right? They are learning and growing and they will improve over time. And Blackmagic Raw is actually really amazing, especially in low light. But Canon is Canon. And their color science just is good. And you can and the amount of banding that happens in C log, even at 8 bit, is just not nearly as bad. And then again, if you get an Atomos, and if you're a professional, you're gonna if you're a business, if you're going to be like a business, inevitably you will want to invest in these types of things you know and the cost will not become as a big of a factor you know and that's your goal if you're going for professional level equipment like if sure if you're starting out with these things like these black magics like a black magic or a z cam like sure you can get them but you're going to you're going to you're investing so that you can make a professional kit so you can make money that so you can be a business with this stuff right so if you are not doing and that's the thing is at some point you should be making enough money that you aren't worrying about trying to find all of the most budget things, right? Inevitably, you should be making enough money to warrant the price of all these things. Uh, sure, maybe you'll get certain budget options like the NTG2 rather than maybe an NTG3, but there are some things that are just going to push the benefit. Like right now, I essentially re-put in the money that I get that I essentially right now mainly all of the money that I have made off of video has inevitably made its way back into equipment, which sure has stalled me from maybe moving to places that I would rather move. I would like to move to, but it's based on your priorities. Um, 
So a big thing, honestly, is you should what you should look at what you should look at in terms of um, what you should look at in terms of what you want is entirely based on what you want to do. Really take into consideration if you're going for con or you're going for a lot of run and gunny shots and you honestly you need stuff for like autofocus pulling and whatnot. You know, save your money on those follow focuses and just get something like, you know, the the USR or even the A7, you know, even the A7 camera. A7 threes are soon going to be pretty cheap and they're amazing video cameras, you know, and you can get an Atomos. They they don't grade as well. They only even externally, they only grade in 8 bit. So they're not my first recommendation, honestly. Um, but if you don't plan to shoot and log all the time, then they're great. Um, you know, and they have a, and Sony has a crazy amount of glass, the Fujifilm X-T3, it doesn't have the internal stabilization. No. Um, but then, then it's like, okay, well then what is the X-T3 versus the black magic? Well, you don't need to buy things like a V mount battery. It's battery life is just fine. It can shoot 10 bit 4k internal. If it's 60 P sure it's eight bit. But then again, you just go back to the Atomos Ninja five then suddenly you're fine, but you could just shoot your slow-mo in 8-bit and then record everything else in 10-bit. It's got a better battery life. It has an amazing autofocus system. Honestly, there's no reason for me, honestly, to me, if you are a convention person and you're looking for a higher-end camera, there is no reason to get the black the, the black magic over the Fujifilm. But if you are somebody who's going to be doing a lot of professional shooting, you're going to be doing a lot of professional-level like studio work where you're going to have a cameraman on in a first AC who's going to be pulling focus for that person. You're going to get multiple monitors. You're going to need things like phantom power into your microphones. You know, you don't want to just put, you don't want to just utilize the battery or, you know, and, or you don't want to utilize, you don't want to use an external recorder. Then by all means, get a black magic, get a Z cam. Those two cameras both are amazing. And it's just kind of, in terms of the two, it's just based on whatever you like more. Like, whichever one speaks to you better. Um, but, or is just a little bit better in your price range, you know? It, that's up to you. But honestly, do you need something like a Black Magic? No. Do you want one depending on what you need? Maybe. So that decision's up to you. That and that's something for you to make that decision on. But I'm kind of glad we got to go over this this cinema thing because to me, I think I see a lot of people talk about things like the Black Magic Pocket Cinema and the Z cams, especially though the Black Magic. It's a lot of the a lot of the looks. Um, when in reality, it made it just isn't always what you need. Um, sometimes it's just better to get the hybrid camera because of the other features that it has. Autofocus is something that cannot be understated. Um, and it can be extremely useful in a documentary scenario or when trying to shoot videos at conventions. Like it's sometimes like having to do, cause like that's, we're gonna go over this in another, in a videographer's guide episode, but the time of your subjects is important. And if you miss a shot because you missed a manual focus pull, and you have to keep doing retakes. That's your fault. And you're probably going to. And, and at some point it's going to be annoying for your subject. Because they are either paying you. Or they are paying. Or you are not paying them. And therefore their time is more valuable than your, than your video. So therefore you should just. All you should do is make these videos. A for free. But B. Um. You know, you should make these videos because they are useful for people, right? Like, and they're useful for you and you're having fun. Uh, but that's a whole topic we're going to get to later. Um, I would, so honestly, in terms of like TLDR, get a black magic if you plan to do studio level work at some point and then you can utilize, um, and then you can utilize the other features in a run and gun scenario if you need to. Um, otherwise, if you plan to almost exclusively do like convention or YouTube, anything like YouTube or, you know, run and gunny stuff, honestly, get a point and shoot with a nice autofocus, 
take that part out of your mind so you don't have to worry about autofocus and you can focus on everything else, especially if you're a single shooter. If you're somebody who is a independent single shooter, get something with a nice autofocus, call it a day. Done. Thank you guys so much for joining me. See you in the next episode.